Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Peladin W04 Mini PC. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So some specs on this. This has a Ryzen 5 5500U, has 6 cores, 12 threads, up to 4 gigahertz. Has 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM. Has a 512 NVMe SSD. It has triple video out via USB-C, HDMI, and DisplayPort. Supports Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, USB 3.2, and has Windows 11 Pro. So lots of nice specs on this. So let's get it open. So here we have a manual. It shows the different ports. We have a power button, two USB 3.2 USB-A ports. We have a USB Type-C port, headphone microphone jack, a CMOS reset button. And that's on the front. On the back side, we have a USB 2.0 port, HDMI port, display port. We have dual LAN ports. We have one and 2.5 gig ports and a DC power port. So this comes with a computer user manual, HDMI cable, power adapter, wall bracket, and hard drive cable. We have some notes here, and that's about it. So we'll pull this out. There we go. So here's the PC. Let's get the accessories out. An inspection tag we have some screws here and here's the bracket so this is so you can mount this here on the back and then you can mount this on the back of a monitor hdmi cable and the power cable and output on this is 19 volts at 3.4 amps and this is a cable for adding a secondary hard drive we measured the power cord power cords around five foot let's take a closer look at the pc so we have this kind of semi matte finish on the top here's the front panel we'll pull the plastic off that has a gloss finish there. We have vents on the sides, back, and bottom. We have rubber feet on the bottom, and here we have all those ports. So a really cool feature of this is that it has a magnetic lid, so we can pop in here and pull this off. So you can see it has four magnets, snaps in place. And here we have access to the inside for upgrading. We can also mount that hard drive on the lid and use the cable to connect it in here. So this comes with one stick of RAM. It has a slot for another. And here we have the MVME SSD. Looks like below that we have the Wi-Fi card. This would be the connector for the external hard drive. So I think that's about it. So it looks like it's going to be super easy to upgrade this. So I'll put the lid back on. Let's see if that fits on backwards. It does not, which is nice. There we go. So let's get this connected up and check it out. So I'm going to plug this into HDMI. I'll plug power in here. I have a keyboard with a wireless dongle. So I'll plug that in the back. And I think that's the USB 2.0 port, which is perfect for a keyboard that's plenty fast. Keyboards can run on USB 1.0 even. And that also works with my mouse. And I'll plug power in. And we'll get this started up. So I currently have this connected to a 1080p monitor. So I'll press the power button. Okay, so it's booting up. Okay, so here we have the boot up wizard. I'll go through it, I'll hit yes. Yes. US keyboard. It wants to connect to a network. I'm going to say I don't have internet for now and I'll continue with limited setup. It has a license agreement. I'll enter my name and I'm going to skip through this part. Next up we have privacy settings. So I'm going to turn these off for now. I may turn them back on later. And now we're booting up. Okay, so we're booted up. So I'm going to plug it into the network now. I'm going to connect up to the 2.5 gigabit network port. And that's the port closest to the power adapter. So I'll pull up a web browser and I'll open up a speed test. Okay, so this is a speed test I host on my network, and it's connected to this PC via 2.5 gigabit ethernet, so we can test out the port speed. So I'll hit start here. So we got about 2.4 down and 2.4 up. Now, even though this is 2.5 gigabit, there could be other things on the network or my speed test server that could be slowing this down. You typically wouldn't expect to get exactly 2,500. So I do think this test is showing that it is running at 2.5 gigabit speeds. While I'm here, let's test the other ethernet port. Okay, so we're getting around 980 megabits per second. So port number two is operating at gigabit speeds. So I'll unplug the network now. Let's test the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to connect to my Wi-Fi network and I'll come back here and we'll test it. Okay, so I'm connected to a Wi-Fi 6 network. Let's run this again. 
So we got 722 down and 856 up. And the results of this test is going to be much more variable because this is an active Wi-Fi network and there are lots of devices on it. But those look like good numbers. So I'll go ahead and connect back up to the 2.5 gigabit. Next, I'll test the hard drive speed. So I'm going to install Crystal Disk Mark. So I'll skip ahead. Okay, so here I have Crystal Disk Mark installed. I'll run the test. So here are the results from Crystal Disk Mark. You can read through those. Look at IOPS here. So we'll close that. So that's the basic setup, and we did a couple tests there. Next, I'll do some different setups so we can test some other things. So I'll cut to that now. Okay, so I've installed Affinity Photo 2.0, and this application has a benchmark functionality. So I'll do that. So if you run Affinity, you could compare your current computer with the results of this. So I'll run the benchmark. Okay, so here we see the results of the test. So if you have Affinity Photo 2, you can run this test and compare the benchmarks, or you might be able to find some benchmarks online to compare this to. So this can be mounted on the back of many monitors. So it has a bracket here that will mount here. This can only go on one way. It doesn't fit on like that. It fits on like this. So in the package of screws, we're going to want to use these smaller screws. So I'll start threading these in before I tighten it down. And this can slide back and forth, so I'll just kind of center it. Now I'll place this on the back of the monitor. So here I'm going to be using the larger screws, and that will go on about like that. So now we could get a short HDMI cable to go from the computer to the monitor. We can have our power running out here, and we'd have a nice clean setup. And this is relatively lightweight, so it shouldn't put a lot of stress on the monitor. Now I was wondering if this could be installed sideways. So if it went on something like that, and then you used another mount here, but it might block access to these ports, and it might make it uneven. So I'm not completely sure if that's a good idea, but it may work for some people. Okay, so here I have it hooked up to three monitors. So on the left, we have DisplayPort. On the right, we have HDMI. And down here, we have USB Type-C. So it seems to be handling three displays just fine. Here I have a 4K video. Let's try and play that. Open it full screen. I'll jump ahead here. So it's playing that back super smooth. Now this is a 4K video, but it is downscaling it to 1080p on this monitor, which maybe takes more processing power. I'm not real sure. So that's the Peladin W04 Mini PC. I think this PC has a lot to offer. It has tons of ports on it. You have your standard USB, but it also has USB-C, DisplayPort, and HDMI. It has dual ethernet. So if you wanted to make some sort of a network appliance, you could maybe use it for that. I really like that you can take the cover off easily to upgrade it. So you have super quick access to the memory, the NVMe SSD, and a SATA drive. A PC like this could be good for general applications like web browsing, office applications. You could use it for light gaming and light video editing. I think if you got into heavy duty 3D rendering and such, it may not be the best fit for that, but it does have quite a bit of power and it has that nice NVMe SSD to give you speedy storage. Now this only comes with one memory chip. So I'm guessing if you put a second memory chip in here, you could enable dual channel memory and that could speed up the computer even more. I forgot to take a look at the power. So we're running at idle. We're drawing around 12, 13 watts. So if you're looking for a mini PC with lots of functionality, I think this is a great option. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.